Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. <laughs> It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King, on you, Husky. <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. Is this your day for planning a big picnic or camping trip to the nearest park area? If it is, give yourself a summertime reminder about the dangers of forest fires. If everyone did his share about fire prevention, 10 million acres of valuable timberland would not go up in flames each year. Most of these fires, 9 out of 10 to be exact, are caused by well-meaning people who are careless for just a brief fatal instant with matches, cigarettes, or campfires. They forget the simple rules advocated by Smokey the Bear. Make sure that cigarette and pipe ashes are completely out. Crush them out with the heel of your shoe. When you use matches, break them in two after using. And when it comes to campfires, the best summertime insurance is water. Drown the fire and rake it over. Make sure it's out. And as Smokey the Bear says, remember, only you can prevent forest fires. This message is brought to you as a public service. King was lying on the floor outside the inspector's office. When the door opened and his master, Sergeant Preston, reappeared, the great dog sprang to his feet. Hey, well, we'll be on our way in less than an hour. Come on, King. The supplies were already lashed to the sled and the dogs were harnessed. It was time for them to hit the trail, but evidently there was to be a delay. No, King, this way, boy. We're stopping at Matt Hunter's office for a moment. He has a letter I promised to deliver to Greg Halloran at the Aztec Mine as we go past there. King trotted beside his master down the street. When he entered Hunter's office, King realized there would be more talk before they started out. He settled down by the door to wait until his master had finished his business. Your letter ready, Matt? As soon as I see the envelope. The inspector said you were making the trip to the Indian village on Aztec Creek, and since the mine's only a little way beyond the village, I didn't think you'd mind delivering this to Greg Halloran. No trouble at all. Here you are. He'll get it tomorrow. Tomorrow, I... I thought you'd get there tonight. What's well, a long way, man. Well, there's no point in the letter, then. Tomorrow is too late. Huh? I should have done something about this before, but I didn't realize until last night what Shane was planning to do. Shane? You know him? I know him. He's a promoter. But what does he have to do with Greg Halloran or the Aztec mine? He holds a mortgage on the mine. I thought you did. I did. Let me explain, Sergeant. Last fall, when Greg bought all that equipment, he borrowed $20,000 from me and gave me a mortgage. He told me about it. Well, last month I needed cash. Had to have it. And I went to Shane. I wanted to borrow money on my personal note. But he wasn't interested in he offered to buy the Aztec mortgage, and uh, I had no choice but to sell. Well, is that so serious? Greg will be able to pay it off. By tomorrow at noon? The mortgage only runs for six months? Yes, that's right. Well, I've heard the mine's producing. It's only started to produce. And last night at the Palace Hotel, I overheard Shane talking to some of his cronies. If the mortgage isn't paid off by tomorrow noon, he means to walk into the gold commissioner's office and foreclose on the mine. It's possible that Greg has the money. It's possible he's on his way into town this very minute. But on the other hand, and this is why I feel guilty, I've neglected to tell him I sold the mortgage. He may be postponing his trip into town because he knows I'm a friend and that I wouldn't think of foreclosing. 
In the, that letter you have, I've told him that she now holds the mortgage, and that he can't expect any leniency. He must pay up before noon tomorrow. Of course, if the letter won't reach him until tomorrow... It'll reach him tonight. Then if he has a good team and starts at once, he can make it back here in time. He may not have the full amount, but tell him to come anyway. I'll see if I can raise some cash. Let's go, King. Thank you, sir. See you later. Now, as the sergeant ran back toward headquarters, King realized the time for the start had come. Up front, King. All right. Unpaint. Run, you husky. It was long after dark when they turned off the Klondike and onto the frozen surface of the Aztec. An hour later, they neared the Indian village. But the village was strangely dark and silent. There was no sign of life anywhere. The sergeant stopped the team. Looking! Hello! Hello! Strange, King. The village seems to be deserted. We'll have to investigate before we go into the mine. That's the chief's lodge just ahead there. The chief lived in a well-built log cabin, and as they approached it, King caught the scent of men inside. It was only a vague feeling of mistrust that made him growl. Still, the growl was enough to alert the sergeant, and as he kicked the door open, he sprang to one side of the doorway. Up with your hands, you're covered. You're wrong. I can see you. Impossible. Now come out of there in the name of the Crown. The Crown? Who are you? Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. Oh, that's different. Come on, Jay. Right. Sergeant, we apologize. We had no idea. Thought you might be a trail robber. Or an Indian. Who are you two? My name's Ben Gee. I'm Jake Martin. What's your business? We're prospecting. Yeah. How do you happen to be here? We were just passing by. Our team and sled is at the edge of the village. We thought we might put up here for the night. Turns out there's nobody home. There was no one here when you arrived? No. That was only a few minutes ago. Let's take a look inside the cabin. Our two usually has a lantern hanging here on the wall. Oh, yes. We haven't touched the thing. Nothing seems to have been disturbed. Our two certainly wouldn't have moved out and left all his belongings behind. It's a strange thing, isn't it, sir? Listen. Uh, those are Indians, all right. Sounds like they're on the warpath. They must be attacking that mining camp we passed. Come on, King. As the first war cry shattered the stillness of the night, Greg Halloran jumped from his cot and started to dress. The door burst open and Rick Collins, his foreman, entered. Well, what's up? It's not two of his braves, about a hundred of them. They've surrounded the mess cabin and the storehouse. We don't have enough men to make a fight of it. But at least we can protect our machinery. What about the gold in the office safe? It'll have to stay there. They can't open the safe and they have a hard time moving it. Come on. Ordering his men to hold their fire, Greg Halloran led them from the bunkhouse up the hill to the mine. There they took cover and watched the Indians, many of whom carried torches. Shall we give them a few rounds now, Greg? No. But look, they've broken into the storehouse. The women and kids are carrying away our supplies. We have plenty. One volley might send them back to their village. I doubt it. If they attack the mine, we'll have to shoot. But we won't do it before, and that's final, Rick. You're the boss. But it looks to me as if they're heading this way now. Yes, it'll be a fight whether you like it or not. Ready, man. Oh, hold your fire. But they're coming. Not anymore, they're not. Someone just drove up. See the sled and team there. Hey, I've seen that big lead dog somewhere before. Of course you have. The man on the sled is Sergeant Preston. Wait. He's talking to Natu. Natu's listening to him. I'm going down there. Coming, Rick? I'm with you. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, why aren't you fellas and girls out at the ballpark these days, watching those home runs walloped into the grandstands, eating peanuts, popcorn, and hot dogs? Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. All over the country, kids 12 years or younger are seeing major or minor league games free. All you do is bring mom or dad or another paying adult, and you get your free baseball ticket immediately inside packages of Quaker Pop wheat, Quaker Pop rice, and Muffet shredded wheat. You'll find two free baseball tickets inside Quaker Paco 10. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. So be guest of your favorite team at the ballpark. Rush to the store with your mom and grab free baseball ticket packages of Quaker Pop wheat or rice, Muffet shredded wheat, or Quaker Paco 10, which has two free tickets. The more packages of these delicious Quaker cereals you get, the more free baseball tickets you get. Now, 
now to continue. Greg and Rick ran down the hill to the point where the sergeant had stopped Natu and his braves. Natu, you've sworn allegiance to the crown and promised to obey the law. Now, why have you broken into this storehouse and stolen supplies? Indians take food. Then white men have to leave. Why do you want them to leave? They're not hurting you. Them make prison. A, a prison? What's he talking about? Big hole in hill. That's a mine, Natu. Greg's digging for gold. No. That's not way to find gold. Not to know how that's done. Men put gravel in pans. Wash rolled show pan. Burning gold? Turn on him. And get him captured. And slave. Look. They're big over home. Not to see sink down. Put not. Who told you? Wanted to make you a slave. Sherman, tell me. Oh, we're good. A white mother. What was his name? Not to. The Meyer. Then? A black beard with him? Ah. Aren't they? You know that. I just come from there. I saw them. A redhead and a man with a black beard, Greg. Sergeant, their names are Ben Gage and Jake Martin. I hired them about a month ago and fired them two weeks ago for deliberate carelessness. They nearly wrecked our boiler. This is all a plot to get even. Maybe more than that. I have some news for you, but I'll finish with Natu first. Natu, you know I've never lied to you. That's right. Sergeant, speak truth. I'm your friend. I've come all the way from Dawson to see if any of your tribe were sick. No Indian sick. I'm glad to hear it. But if anyone had been, I'd have given him medicine. You good friend. All Indian know that. All right, then. You must believe me. The man with the red hair and his partner are bad men. They've lied to you. Halloran doesn't want to hurt the Indians. Raise your right hand and tell him you want to be friends, Greg. Okay. Halloran wants to be your friend, Natu. Uh... That's good. You did wrong to steal Halloran's supplies, Natu. You broke the law. But we understand that the reason you stole was that the red-headed man made you afraid. You won't be punished if you bring the supplies back. Let them keep what they've taken. You hear that, Natu? Halloran is making you a fine present. Ah, him good friend. Of course he is. Indian teach man with hair like fire not to tell lies. Never mind that. When you get back to your village, just hold him and his partner until I get there. Not to do that. You may go now. Ah. Malik Tereana. Malik Tereana. Come Rick, call the men down from the mine. Tell them the sergeant settled everything. Right. Okay, boys, it's all over. There won't be any more trouble. I'm afraid I haven't settled everything for you, Crane. No one could have handled not two the way you did. But losing a few supplies is nothing. Of course not. Compared with losing your mind. What's that? You have a mortgage coming due tomorrow noon. Why, well, yes, but Matt Hunter has it. He won't mind waiting a few days for his money. Do you have enough gold to pay it off? Yes. I was all ready to start in the town when that last blizzard came along. We don't have any dogs. Horses and pack mules find deep snow mighty tough going. So I'm waiting now until the trail packs down a little. But if Matt's worried about his money, you tell him he... Read this letter, Greg. Oh, who's it from? From Matt. He couldn't mean to... Read it. Sure. I'll need some more light. Let's go to my cabin. In the cabin, Rick joined the sergeant and Greg just as Greg finished reading the letter. Well, what's the matter with you, Greg? Uh, you look as if you'd lost your last friend. It's the mine. We're going to lose the mine. What are you talking about? Matt sold the mortgage. Roger Shane holds it now. He's going to foreclose. Well, he can't. Yes, he can. There's nothing to stop him. If he isn't paid off by noon tomorrow. But you have the gold in the safe. It must be in Dawson by noon tomorrow. It's after midnight now. There's no way to get it to town in time. There's one way. Well, how? My team. But I thought you were making a patrol. A special trip to check on the health of Natu's tribe. The mission's accomplished. You were going to arrest Ben Gage and Jake Martin. I still intend to. You can't guard them and make any sort of time. I'm going to arrest them and leave them in your custody until I return. You do that? Make another trip back here? Greg, the motto of the force is maintain the right. In my mind, it isn't right that you should lose this mine after all the work you've put in it. There's something else, too. You hired Gage and Martin a month ago. Yes. Just after Shane bought the mortgage from Matt, they proceeded to try and wreck your equipment, slow up production. Tonight, they incited the Indians against you. You think Shane hired them to make trouble? It's possible. But if he did, and if his purpose was to keep you from washing out enough gold to pay off the mortgage, he's failed. All that remains to make his failure complete is to get the gold to Dawson. Sergeant, it's in the office safe. Let's get it on board my sled. Come on. The gold was loaded on the sergeant's sled. Since the trail was already broken, King was harnessed in the lead position. Greg and Rick accompanied the sergeant as far as the Indian village. Natu had bad news for them. Fellow with hair like fire, 
Man with black beard. Them gone when Indian get back to village. Probably heading for Dawson. Well, it doesn't matter. I'll pick them up later. I know you'd like to come along with me, Greg, but your gold's heavy, and every extra ounce of weight will slow the team. I understand. The letter I gave you and the gold are all you need to get the mortgage. All I ask is that you make it in time. We'll do our best. Find the team, King. <laughs> right on, King. <laughs> ben Gage and Jake Martin realized the sergeant would learn from Natu that it was they who had incited the Indian attack. So they left the village as soon as the sergeant started for the mining camp. They reached the mouth of the Aztec shortly after daybreak. Here, the trail sloped sharply as it ran into the Klondike. Jake was riding the sled while Ben was on the running board, driving the team hard. He neglected to use his brake on the sharp downgrade, and the sled was crowding the dogs as they neared the turn onto the Klondike trail. When they reached it, Ben shouted, Help! Help! You must! Uh! The dogs swung away from the whip, and their sudden change of direction knocked the sled off balance. It took the turn on one runner and then crashed over. Ben was thrown clear. But Jake managed to hang on to the overturned sled. Oh, oh, oh you have to go there. Oh. Oh, come on. Help me get this thing right side up. I, I can't. What's the matter with you? I twisted my ankle. Give me a hand. As soon as I get the sled back on its runners. Hey, there's someone coming. Where? Up the trail from Dawson. It's Cortland. Hey, Cortland. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, what's the matter here? We had a spill. What happened to Ben? Oh. Twisted his ankle. Help me get him on the sled. Oh. Well, what brings you up here, Court? Why aren't you two sticking oh. close to the mine? We got the Indians to attack it last night. And Sergeant Preston showed up. We thought we'd better clear out. Preston had a letter for Greg from Matt. Telling him Shane means to foreclose? Yes. I oh. overheard Matt talking to some of his friends, trying to borrow enough money to pay off the mortgage himself. He had no luck. What about Greg? Greg can't do anything about paying off now. Does he have enough gold? I think so. Well, it isn't noon yet. But how could he possibly get to Dawson in time? He couldn't make it on a horse. He has no dog team. Preston does. He's heading back for Dawson to get over to take the gold with him. Uh, Preston will have his hands full with the Indians. The Indians couldn't have given Preston much trouble. Well, I'll bet he... And you'd lose your bet. Look, way up the Aztec trail. A dog team? Hey, Greg has no dogs. No, it's Preston. We have to consider the possibility that he has the gold on board his sled. Uh, me up. we got to get out of here. You're staying right where you are. Huh? You'll wait here for Preston. Have you gone nuts? He must have found out that Jake and I were behind the Indian attack. He'll arrest me. What if he does? It won't be the first time you've gone to jail, and shame will pay you well for it. Jake and I are driving on and leaving you here. A fat chance. Bad ankle or not, I'll tear both of you limb from limb. Will you get this through your thick skull? This is a way to stop him, slow him down so he can't get to Dawson on time. Now, here's your story. <laughs> You and Jake had a fight. He knocked you down and you twisted your ankle. Before you could get up, he jumped on the sled and drove away. You're not going to leave me here. Yes, we are. But Preston won't. Bad ankle, no snowshoes or supplies. He'll have to take you on board his sled and he'll have to take you all the way to Dawson. There's nothing like weight to slow a dog team down, Ben, and you carry plenty of it. I don't like it. You're staying here whether you like it or not. Come on, Jake. I know. Now listen to reason. Oh, my ankle. I can't stand on it. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. The bases are loaded. It's the last of the ninth and two out. Here comes the pitch. He swings. And oh, it's a grand slam home run. Be right there in the ballpark and see a grand slam home run. Come out to the ballpark this very week as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate free if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult. It's so easy to get a free baseball ticket. It's right inside a package of Quaker Puff wheat, Quaker Puff rice, and Muffet shredded wheat. You get two free tickets in Quaker Paco 10. The ticket tells you the names of the teams and the dates. Don't miss out on the fun another day. Bring the whole family. Remember, no mailing, no waiting. You can get as many free baseball tickets as you want. They're inside packages of Quaker Puff wheat or Puff rice, Muffet shredded wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Get yours right away. Now to continue. In spite of Ben's protest, Jake and Cortland drove on. And it was King who first saw the big black bearded man lying in the snow when the sergeant's team reached the Klondike Trail. Help! Help me! Okay. I can't walk. What happened? My, 
My partner and I had a fight. He knocked me down. Then he drove off with the team and left me here to die. Honest, I, I can't walk. My ankle. You're under arrest, then. Yeah, that's okay. Take me to jail. Take me anywhere it's warm. What's the matter with your ankle? I, I think it's broke. No? We'll see. Oh! You're right. Your ankle is broken. It, it is? That surprises you. I, I was hoping it was only a sprain. You won't be able to walk for a long time. Don't leave me here, Sergeant. You must weigh nearly 250 pounds. Oh, please, take me with you. I'll die if you don't. That's true. Still, I have other business. I, I know you want to get to Dawson before noon, but uh, I'll make a deal with you. I'll make a full confession. I don't need a confession from you. When you want to know if hire Jake and me to make trouble at the mine, don't you? It, it was Shane. Shane and Carton. I'll testify against him. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do anything you say. Here's a notebook and a pencil. Write out your confession and sign it. Oh, all right, Sergeant. Anything you say. Ben scribbled a complete confession in the sergeant's notebook and signed it. Uh, there. There it's all. You'll take me with you now, won't you? You'll need me as a witness for the Crown. Being a witness for the Crown won't stop you from going to jail. But you won't leave me here to die. I had no intention of leaving you here. <laughs> you said that the mortgage... A human life means more than any such consideration, even when it's a life as misspent as yours. Uh oh Put your arm around my shoulder. I'll get you onto the sled. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. When Ben had been lifted onto the sled and covered with a blanket, the sergeant checked the team's harness. <laughs> Patted King as he considered the miles ahead. He knew the exact distance to Dawson and the pace the team must maintain if the town were to be reached by noon. With Ben's added weight, he also knew it would be a heartbreaking effort. I hate to ask it of you, King, but we must try. <laughs> And even if we fail, fella, I'll know that no other team could have done so well. All right, boy. Get the team up. All right, on time. On your Oh, 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 just in time. I have the mortgage in my pocket, and I'm on my way to the gold commissioners to foreclose. Is it 12 yet? Two minutes out. Uh, then he can't possibly make it. He can't make what? Sergeant Preston. We think he has the gold to pay off, but he can't make it. No, I see no sign of him. Come on. By the time the team reached the outskirts of Dawson, King was pulling most of the weight of the sled himself. His heart was close to bursting, and his breath came in labored gasps. But he knew the sergeant wouldn't ask the team to keep up such a pace unless the need were desperate. On, King. Only a little way now. <laughs> they were heading down Front Street now, and King threw himself against the traces. Inspired by his example, the team matched his effort, and the sled picked up speed. Faster and faster. One minute. Two minutes. King knew this last sprint could only be sustained for seconds, though. And then, when he was afraid his muscles would be unequal to even one more driving stride, the word of release came. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. The goal had been reached. The sled stopped directly in front of the gold commissioner's office. And the sergeant ran up the steps. Shane was about to open the door. No need to go in there, Shane. What? It's exactly two minutes of twelve. Here's a letter from Greg Halloran, and on my sled I have $20,000 in gold, which I'm authorized to pay you for his mortgage. Hand it over. Now, wait. This letter... The gold's on the sled. I want the mortgage. Is that it? Yes. I'll take I... it. Thank you, Shane. Now we'll proceed to other business. All three of you, Shane, Cortland, and Martin, are under arrest in the name of the Crown. Oh, what? Conspiracy to incite a riot and conspiracy to destroy property. How dare you accuse me of such a thing? Or me? I dare because you're responsible for the acts of your agents, and I have absolute proof. First, that Jake Martin and Ben Gage were your agents... And secondly, that they tried to wreck the machinery at the Aztec mine and later incited the Indians to attack the mine. You'll march ahead of my team down the street to headquarters. You won't send me to jail. I may have to pay a fine, but that's all. Not quite. Your business depends on the trust people have in you. When they hear what you've done, you'll be finished. In Dawson and the Yukon. Let's go. All right. <laughs> on the headquarters, King. You can take it easy now, boy. You won the race and saved Greg's mind. This case is closed. <laughs> Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. 
There's Roaring Adventure on Mutual. Tales that will take your breath away and transport you into lands where danger is your constant companion. First, we take you far up into the barren Yukon territory of yesterday, where icy winds and howling wolves are enough to drive a man wild, and civilized ways are gone in an ever-present lust for gold. Now let's go to another lawless world, the west of early frontier days. Not so cold, but which makes up for the freezing temperatures with trigger-tense tempers, where the gun is a man's lease on life. This is a country which abounds with cattle rustlers, and where miles and miles go by before you see any signs of life. The West, beautiful but wild, a land which cries out for the hand of the law. You will never lack for adventure on Mutual, whether it freezes you with fear in the wild Northwest Territory or singes you with the acrid heat of the Western Plains. It's all on Mutual every week over most of these stations. Sergeant Preston reported to headquarters for orders from Inspector Conrad. Sergeant, I understand you're leaving for Beaver City. That's right, Inspector. While you're there, see if you can't persuade Sam Baxter to either get out of the Yukon or put his gold in a bank. Where does Sam keep his gold? In his cabin. It's bait for trouble, perhaps murder. I'll do my best, Sam. When the Mountie arrives at Baxter's cabin, Sam has already been murdered by a man who wears a red parka. The killer knows that his own safety depends upon Preston's death. Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America.